Welcome, everybody. You have joined us for Bug Out at Alpha Points Technology Camp, Ideas for STEAM Activities with Code Jumper. Now, that is a long title because we're going to be covering a lot of different stuff today. You're going to hear about Alpha Point, who Alpha Point is, what they've done, specifically what this particular summer camp is that they've done, and how it's related to Code Jumper. So, again, thank you for joining us today for Bug Out at Alpha Points Technology Camp. Ideas for STEAM activities with Code Jumper. So, as we get started today, let's go ahead and get those poll questions up. We'd like you to answer. Betsy is going to put those up for us now. If you have joined us for a webinar in the past, we're going to ask you our typical questions. We want to know where you are from, what your job title is, and how you heard about this webinar. Helps us to know how we're getting the message out and how it's working, how effective it is. In addition, here are a couple of other content-related poll questions. We want to know, do your students participate in summer camps? If yes, and if you answer the question yes, please type in the chat what kind of camp it is. Um, if the answer is no, of course, that's, that's the answer to the question, yes or no, uh, which would also equate with not applicable. Uh, second question, if your students participate in out-of-school technology education, where does that occur? You check all that apply. Would that be after school, weekend, summer, holiday break, other, or for you, is this not applicable? And the final poll question before we get down to the rest of this is, how are the camps that your students participate in funded? Again, you'll check all that apply. Does it come from camp fees, from grants, from scholarships, from state agencies, other, or is this not applicable? Let's get into some things you need to know, some ground rules for today. Uh, please place your questions in the chat. We will have multiple times where we will look at questions and get those answered for you. We have one and a half hours of ACVREP credit, and Betsy and will give you the code shortly. Closed captioning is available for us. We have four participants today, two from Alpha Point and two from APH. First is Jake McLaughlin. He is the Senior Manager for Special Events and Programs for Alpha Point. Next, we have Lexi Holzapple, who is the Youth Services person with Alpha Point. Moving on to our APH participants, Jim Sullivan, Director of Social Enterprise for APH and Joe Hodge, our Technical Innovations Product Manager. Uh, Joe and Jim have done quite a bit of work with us on APH webinars in the past with technology and especially with Code Jumper. So glad to have them back helping out today. Some challenges, things that may resonate with you that you've dealt with. Uh, locating entry-level STEM instructional tools that are inclusive and engaging can be a challenge because of a lack of options, you might think there are none out there. You may not have found any in the past. We're going to try to address that today. With not a whole lot of time in the classroom to gauge in coding, students need opportunities to build their competency in STEM during summer, weekend, and after school activities. There just is a, a lot of stuff you want to get done and not a whole lot of time to do it. Finding STEM solutions with comprehensive instructional materials a cuts down on the learning curve required for teachers to lead technical activities and teachers can benefit from content that is already tied to educational standards and has built in measures for tracking progress. So you don't have to be a professional at coding and teaching coding to be able to use this stuff that is definitely going to be helpful. And let's get into our learning objectives. So we're going to list three educational settings where Code Jumper can develop critical thinking skills for elementary, middle, and high school students. We're going to name the association uh, that sets the education standards to which the Code Jumper lessons align, and we'll examine how the Code Jumper lessons are applied in a summer technology camp setting. Uh, I'll point just like to say thank you for this opportunity and. Um you know, sharing with your audience about Alpha Point, and we'll get into a little bit more today on what programs in particular uh, that we have for youth that are available uh, either throughout the year or during uh, the summertime. So thanks for answering all that uh, information in those poll questions as well. Uh, just gives us a, a good idea on, 
you know, what programming might be best for youth in the future as well. So Alpha Point, uh, we have been around since 1911 and Lexi and I in particular uh, really focus on our youth programming. And today APH asked us in particular to come in and uh, talk about our technology camp, uh, which is a week long uh, day camp experience. Uh, we do this in cooperation with a lot of different programming in Kansas City, Missouri, and partnerships to really help pull this off. Um, I know Lexi, she's been with Alpha Point now for three or four years and really oversees a lot of the uh, youth programming services and, and coordinates uh, that with us to help serve roughly around 500 youth throughout uh, the U.S. a year. Uh, Lexi, is anything you want to add into that, or maybe what what's your particular favorite youth program here at Alpha Point? Um, probably Adventure Camp and Technology Camp, just because that's when we really get to have fun and learn a lot of new things. Mm. I know our next poll question probably coming up is related to the age group of Technology Campers, so I won't give out too much there, but uh, technology camp is that week-long experience uh, where campers come in and for a whole week we work on technology training and uh, adaptive software whether that be I you know I'm going kind of fast through the slides aren't I that first one going we'll get there though um, uh, all tech campers will get a laptop that we partner with computers uh, for the blind and they get to take that laptop home with them after the five days of training uh, but more specifically and more important is the software that we're able to put on there for those campers. And we really try to focus on Zoom text. So that's magnification uh, software it helps to blow up the screen for uh, our, our campers. And then JAWS, which is text to speech, which will allow campers that really have no vision or progressively losing their vision, um, you know, the ability to have functionality over that computer. And then we also install uh, Microsoft Pro uh, package software. So you get all your, your basics and plus some. So Word, Excel, um, PowerPoints even on there, which we don't spend too much time on, but the, the basics on all those as well. And then we use a lot of different cloud-based software and applications, uh, especially in today's world. And then, like I said, the campers get to take those home with them after the five days of camp. And more specifically is two years ago, we were able to acquire uh, some code jumpers through APH funds. And unfortunately that was still through COVID. Um, we, we didn't offer that in hands because we switched technology camp all virtually. Well, this last summer uh, we had, you know, roughly around 30, 35 students um, sign up for technology camp and about 20, of those individuals were in-house here in Kansas City. So they came, uh, really utilized Code Jumper, and we focused on a lot of the programming and relied really heavily on APH as far as the website and resources that they have in order to teach our students. And I know we'll get a little more to that, so I won't say too much moving forward on that. That was a lot, I think. Lexi, is there anything you want to add about Technology Camp that was maybe your favorite or anything you think our audience or guest should really know about? Um, yeah, I mean, this year using Code Jumper, I think that all of the kids really enjoyed using it and it was just fun seeing them um, get creative with not only the APH lesson plans, but um, the, kind of making it their own, yeah. so. They were teaching us more about coding after yeah. some of the lessons than what we were able to teach them. And that's always really awesome and rewarding specifically for me to, to see the, the training and the software. And then, you know, even having the ability to have Code Jumper to teach these young people more about coding and really instill some of those, you know, sparks or incitement on, you know, somebody that wants to do this maybe for a living down the road or just wants to talk about, you know, coding and the processing with some of their sighted friends to have that to be able to relate in that working knowledge is just awesome. So I think that's all I had for that slide. All right. Do uh, Would you like to talk a little bit more about your youth programs? We would love to. And I'm going to let Lexi take this away for a bit. 
Uh, so we offer um, a bunch of different youth programs. We have our I program, which is expanding youth experiences. Um, and these, this program pretty much um, allows youth to participate in different activities um, around the community to discover new interests and passions. So um, like this past year, we went to Snow Creek and our youth got to go skiing and snowboarding. Um, and then obviously we have our technology camp that Jake ch touched on. Um, and then we have our adventure camps, which is your typical summer camp that we have every summer. Um, our youth get to go rock wall climbing, zip lining, horseback riding. Um, this past year we got to do ax throwing which was Jake's personal favorite. It is, I had a lot of fun with that. Um, and then we have our STEP program, which is Student Transitional Employment Program. And then we have our college prep program, which help, um, help, helps our students uh, navigate their first semester of college successfully, so. What do we got going on this weekend? I think we have an I program event and maybe the Stone Soup Singers coming up. Yes, we have our Stone Soup Singers, which is a caroling group where they'll come to Alpha Point and sing all their favorite Christmas carols. And we have our youth service project where we're going to be making different knotted blankets and donating them to a local charity. Yep. And I think APH, can you guys, or you might have already, uh, oh, I can see over in the chat, we shared a link in the chat box that will direct you guys to the uh, Youth Services webpage where you can find any information and we'll take you back to the registration or sign up pages for these programs that we offer. And then we also specifically put on there the web link to Technology Camp specifically that'll give you more information. The registration for that is not quite up yet, but we will have that up and ready to go uh, right after the first of the year. And then for the I program event that Lexi was talking about, if, if anybody has anybody in the Kansas City area, youth or volunteer wise, want to come out or even adult for the Stone Soup Singers, uh, get in contact with us. And then I also just added in the link. Uh, for the youth uh, services project in particular, if any of you TDIs or anybody wants to share that information. I'd uh, love to have you guys come out. Uh, Lexi will be buying pizza for everybody. So that's a bonus if you do come out and help out with us that year. So, but thank you, Lexi, for sharing about our programs there. Mm -hmm. So Jake, I, I just have a couple of questions for you. So for the technology camp in the summertime, do the kids yep. have to live in the in the Kansas City area or, or do they no. come from around the United States? So we offer technology camp here in Kansas City um, for individuals that can make it here. But then we also offer this virtually as well. Now, you, please keep in mind that there are some limitations if you do sign up virtually on how we can teach and that social element that is involved with it as well. But our curriculum and our schedule uh, is very similar just with a couple different uh, changes just because again the virtual aspect of it and you know with that as well we also create and have a hotline for individuals to call in um, if they're needing one-on-one -on -one help and they're signed up virtually, that way we can troubleshoot, do any problems. But throughout the week, the in-person students and the virtual students, there is a lot of engagement there. We have um, you know, time set aside just for chat groups, guest speakers to come in uh, and talk, and they address the entire group at the same time as well. So there's a lot of uh, group project that we're able to rope everybody in on, and then some is more specific and individualized as well. And again, those the kids that are there in person, they could be from Kansas City, they could be from St. Louis, they could be from Kalamazoo, Michigan. We had a young man uh, this year uh, come all the way from Puerto Rico. Him and his mom flew in. They stayed in Kansas City for the week. Uh, this was his first laptop ever had that he was able then to learn these skills, work on Code Jumper even, and then take that laptop and, you know, home with him along with the accessibility and knowledge but also this was the first time 
he had ever met in, in his life another youth that was visually impaired and blind. So he took away a whole bunch of friends that he'll have for a lifetime now. Okay. And, and in terms of the cost, um, are there costs to the students? Yeah, so uh, Technology Camp is at $175, I believe. That is still the correct uh, cost. And that is a subsidized um, you know, camp fee regardless for those campers. But we also offer financial assistance if those individuals qualify. And then we uh, have a partnership with uh, Missouri Council for the Blind here in Missouri that has a set aside a special program and special funding that's just for Missouri kiddos to come. And that, that waives the entire cost of technology camp. And then, like I was stating earlier, you know, one of these laptops, the software and the training, uh, on average, it's about close to $1,400 to $1,500 per camper. Uh, for the training time, assistance, and uh, the technology they get to keep, uh, uh, keep at the end of this. And Alpha Point subsidizes a lot of that already for us. So if you were interested in coming to Technology Camp and uh, you know the cost is something that you're thinking might be a worry or I don't know how a parent will do this or how we'll figure this out, give us a call. Give Lexi a call. Uh, the most important thing we could want at Alpha Point is for those students to have the opportunity uh, to come learn new skills, put their hands on some code jumpers, make some friends. Uh, so we will figure out how to get uh, your camper here to Alpha Point, either virtually or in person. Great. So Jim, if, I'm not... if you, you want to come and learn a couple new things, you're more than welcome to join as well. Actually, Hollywood and I can come and we can go see the Royals play because I'm not sure if Joe's checked that off of his baseball. Yep. I think yes, Julie Haveman right. would probably join us too. I think Julie Haveman is out there in the audience. That would uh, be awesome and amazing. So I, I think we're ready to transition to uh, Joe, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, Alpha Point will be participating in the um, this um, session on debugging and we'll be asking them questions throughout the session to talk a little bit about how they were incorporating CodeJumper at various times into camp. So, all right. So Joe, are you ready? We have a poll question, don't we? We do. Oh, we, we actually do. have a poll question first. So this is um, our opportunity to turn it back to Paul to bring us into this poll question. And it's also an opportunity for you to leave if you haven't already done so. If you have questions, you can leave them in the chat while this poll is up. This is a multiple choice question. Uh, what age groups does the Alpha Point Summer Technology Camp serve? We sort of covered it, but maybe not completely. So just if you're not sure, just guess and um, to what age groups check all that apply elementary school middle school high school or community college what age group does the alpha point summer technology camp serve choose all that apply elementary middle high school community college and don't forget to leave your questions in the chat if it's an alpha point question or something about code jumper make sure you get it in there and while we have these poll questions up at different times we will Try to answer those questions. All right, doesn't look like we've got any questions in the chat so far. So just take uh, that minute to answer this question. Let us know if you're you're paying attention and following along um, as we get into pulling out Code Jumper and really playing with it and learning about the pods and the programming. I will say that the next uh, 45 minutes or so should be incredibly interesting because dog number one and dog number two have settled in here in the, uh, in the uh, Code Jumper studios. <laughs> <laughs> and I am very certain that uh, dog number two will start taking the Code Jumper pods here momentarily. So. Oh, Wonderful. no. <laughs> <laughs> so We're operating our go, scarcity model. Uh, you hear me say, put that down. Um, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I didn't see those instructions in Code Jumper when we first got that out. Yep. What happens if a dog takes off with a pod? <laughs> All right. Well, we've had about 31% participate. So go ahead and fill out that poll question um, as we're reading the early results. So, what age group does the Alpha Point Summer Technology Camp serve? 86% uh, said middle school, 57% said high school, 
43% said elementary school, and we had no takers on community college. So Jake and Lexi, what was the correct response? The correct response is that it is elementary, middle school, and high school. So everybody is a winner today on this game show. No matter what you picked, you picked at least one right answer. I wish all answers and questions were <laughs> like that on test because I would have done better in school. All right. Well, we're going to end this poll and move forward with our presentation. So, Joe, it's up to you. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, so what is CodeJumper? So CodeJumper is a physical programming language designed by Microsoft and developed by APH. It's designed to teach basic computing program skills to kids age 7 to 11. Go ahead and go to the next slide here. So how does CodeJumper work? So it's similar to block style coding, but tangible. So con uh, CodeJumper teaches physical programming language by audio, or with, sorry, with physical pods with audio feedback. I had to reposition a headphone there, sorry. Uh, so we have, uh, it does this by incorporating songs, stories, theme sound sets. You can even do custom sound sets. So if there's something that your kiddos are into or that is sort of unique to your class, you can create your own custom sound sets. And uh, going on to the next slide here. So where is CodeJumper used? So we can use this in an individual setting and group setting. So starting with individual instruction, we can use this in the classroom and at home. And then in group instruction, we have the classroom, camps, such as Alpha Point, after school programs. And then we recommend one kit to every three to four students. And now we're going to have Sully share his screen. Yes, we will. All right. So I'm going to go here and then here and then here. And um, we're going to start with the, the Code Jumper app. app. Yep. yep, which is currently up on the screen, Joe. So you want to go ahead and describe the app to everybody? Yep. So the app for CodeJumper is currently on Windows and on Chromebook and Android. Uh, so this can be used with the, any screen reader that's on those systems. So on Windows, you have Narrator, JAWS, NVDA. And on um, Android, you have TalkBack. And on Chromebook, you have Chromevox. So the app is set up with some menus at the top, uh, some icons at the top. We have the Bluetooth sim uh, symbol. This lets you know if your Bluetooth is connected or not. We have a musical gear, which is where you would click on to add custom sounds. We have a lowercase i for about. We have a right arrow to play the program. And then we have a megaphone to read the program aloud to the user. And then we have a square stop program. Uh, below these buttons are four threads. This is where you can choose your sound sets. Uh, the threads actually will correspond with the four jacks on the hub when we get to that here, actually right now. <laughs> so uh, we're going to move on to the Code Jumper kit. So the really cool thing that we have here on the hub, this is kind of the brains of the operation, so to speak. So first and foremost, this has a speaker on it. So sounds that you play can come through uh, this speaker. Um, the, there's a play and stop button on it. And they actually are a triangle and square, just kind of like the app buttons I mentioned. There's also a dial on here, like a rotary dial, old radio dial type uh, that turns the code jumper on and off. Uh, this does take AA batteries and connects to your device with Bluetooth. So moving on to the pieces in the kit, we have play pods. These are these actually come, uh, there's eight of them in the box. You can connect these. They have a 3.5 jack that plugs into the hub itself. And they can also connect to each other to create a thread of code. We have, uh, so on the play pod itself, let me real quick describe that. There's two dials. There's a duration dial. And then there's a sound dial. So we have a flat shaped kind of donut shaped dial. That's gonna be your sound dial. Then we have a taller 
dial, that's the duration dial. Moving on, we have uh, we have play uh, pause pods. We have three of those. These will um, basically create a pause in the uh, code program. So you would just turn the dial on it and that will determine your duration of pause. So you can pause for like one beat, one and a half beat, two beats, et cetera. We have a loop pod. We have two of these. Um, so we can you can actually create a loop. So for example, if you want to loop a sound, um, you can do so. The dial on here will um, dictate how many times that loops. We have a selection pod. You get two of these. This is your if slash else statement. So basically, uh, you would set you could set a number. So if something's greater than a number, it'll do one thing. If it's less than a number, it'll do another thing. Then we have a merge pod. And that's it as far as the physical pods. We're going to go through the, uh, the, the actual plugs here in a second. But I want to mention one thing. So everything that I described here is distinguishable by touch um, with either. So if you're visually impaired, you can tell by color. If you're totally blind like myself, you can, you can tell by the touch of the, of the pod. Uh, and Jake, I just wanted to ask you guys real fast when we, before we get to the plugs did how did you guys explain the pieces to the um to the kids we we did it very similar to how you did it um one thing we did take from your guys is uh kit when you get the box is there's a very visual um handout in there as well that outlines all the codes so for the group that had low vision uh we were working with we took that and blew it up and then we're able to pass that out individually to the group. So it just gives them an enlarged version of it for uh, people with low vision. And then uh, for individuals with no vision uh, or progressive vision loss to be there, we, we explained it really a lot like you did. And then we uh, sent over in links uh, through their email, camper email addresses, uh, resources to a lot of your guys' videos so they could have those. And then furthermore, that demonstrates their ability to communicate through email, collaborate online and chat, and then also do some of their own research. And then we just did it trial by air. We threw everybody into it with the lesson plan and then see, seeing what happened. And as the week progressed on, uh, the students, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, they were teaching us things that we didn't even know yet about Code Jumper. So it was, it was really awesome to see everybody work together and come together as a team like that. I'll probably that's use this video for next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so, so going back to the plugs, we have, uh, we have eight constant plugs. We have a random plug. This has the R on it. We have an infinity plug with the infinity sign. This is, uh, I, was, I always joke, this is the kid's favorite plug when they play a sound because it just keeps going on forever. We have uh, counter plugs. We have uh, three variable plugs and we have an extender cable. And that completes the code jumper kit. Yeah, so just to kind of, again, sort of give like a little bit of an example. So on the, on the selection and merge pod, um, or with the selection and merge pod, um, the if then else statement, um, the dial with two spokes is the true part of the statement. And the dial with three spokes is the false uh, part of the statement. So in other words, as the code is coming through, if the second dial is set for say two and the third dial is say set for four, um, the question would be if uh, two is greater than four, right? Play uh, this pot, I'll otherwise play that pot. So in that particular instance, the, the statement would be false. But if I put in the plus um, counter, Every time we ran through that, um, we would go up and, uh, or we would go up one when we ran through that. So we would go from two to three um, and three would still be less than four. So the statement would still be false. Um, in the instance of say the infinity pod, which, or infinity plug, which is around here somewhere. Sorry, I had to let, uh, let the dog number one out on say the, the loop and I'll just pull, I'll pull this in here for a second. Um, in this particular instance, if I put this infinity 
um, plug into the loop, it just means that it's going to play that loop for for infinity. And so if that was uh, one of my threads uh, coming out of the hub, it would play that over and over and over again. Um, the the plugs with numbers on them, like three, if I were to put the three here into the play pod, it's going to play the third sound in that sound set. Um, and then with the um, with the with the variables, that's that X. So if, for instance, I were to put a variable into one of the play pods and I put the three into the variable, it's going to play that third sound. And then if I put the variable into the next play pod, um, it's going to see that in there and it's going to play the third it's going to play the third uh, third sound again. Third sound. So, so yep. just some of the different things that you can you can do with that. So um, anything else to add there, Joseph? No, I think we got it. All right, killing it here. All right, any questions in the chat? Hopefully everybody's so still. Far. All right. All right, so I think we're going on to talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the applications and whatnot. So I think I need to stop sharing my screen, correct? Yes, and I am going to share my screen again. All right. So we want to advance this slide, please. All right, and to the next one. We're actually gonna again, Oop. and back one. All right, so as far as the uh, curriculum goes, if you go to codejumper.com, uh, you will find resources. And in those resources, you will find lessons that are available that are aligned with uh, national technology standards. And they're aligned to the first grade technology standards uh, that exist. There are eight primary lessons and there are 11 advanced lessons. Um, and throughout the lessons, you are encouraged to, uh, to journal. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later on in the program. And at the end of each lesson, or at the end of each set of lessons, primary and advanced, you are encouraged to do two assessments. So essentially, you're going to do a project after the first eight, and then you're going to do a project after the next 11. And there is a rubric that is available to help you to score, score that. So uh, there are some things that can, can be done here. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, um, it is not possible to save any of the programs that you're building with CodeJumper. Uh, so the journaling becomes very important. And as we've begun to see, we're starting to see things on social media uh, with what people are doing. Uh, how I found Jake and Lexi, actually, we came across a, a, a news channel in the Kansas City area that did a, a story specifically about the camp and how they were using, using CodeJumper. Right? So, so the curriculum is there. Uh, you cannot save anything, but the curriculum is specifically aligned to the technology standards, and you do not have to use all of it, but you can, you can use some of it. Um, so let's move to the next slide. And so as we're talking specifically about the curriculum, it's really set up pretty similar throughout all 19 of the, the lessons. So there are learning outcomes, objectives, and vocabulary uh, for each one of the lessons. Well, for instance, algorithm or today's subject is debugging. There is an unplugged activity that you can do offline. There is a guided activity that will walk you through step by step. It will tell you everything that you need and it will take you uh, every step that needs to be done to succeed. Then there is an exploration activity, which is where the kids can begin to explore some of the things that they've learned today, maybe some of the stuff that they've learned in previous days, but then they'll begin to trip upon concepts that they haven't gotten to yet. And then finally, there is a check for understanding. Uh, so before we get into specifically talking about debugging, we'll shift back again to, to the, our Alpha Point friends and, and ask them a little bit about how they beg, borrowed, or still stole uh, from any of these lessons, how they adapted them to make them their own. So Jake? Well, uh, we didn't steal anything, so we put that out on the table. But um, yeah, thanks. And that was an awesome explanation of just the pods and how to use it and adapt it to your classroom or your group or your camp or whomever you're working with. And we did do a lot of that. We, we started with and looked over a lot of the lesson plans that you guys have available. And then we modified that to meet the needs uh, for camp. You know, we had a lot of other things going on as well. 
But Code Jumper specifically this year was extremely valuable, important to us, and teaching those concepts that way we can build onto it, you know, for uh, the future as well, which we plan on. So we we put the kids in groups based off of vision at first and level and assessments. They had the opportunity to really learn and understand all the different functionality of the pods or some of the you know basic kind of lesson plans. And then we didn't do a lot of journaling after we did the lessons, but we came together and talked about that critically as a group. And then one thing that we found out was mixing the kids up in their groups brought in new ideas and strategies. So not only would we come back after a lesson plan and talk collectively as a group about it, then we would mix the kids up and have them talk about their experience with a particular lesson plan. And the same lesson plans weren't shared with every group. So it was a way for us to incorporate a lot of different lesson plans that came up with a lot of different strategies and a lot of different solutions. And then the youth and the campers were able to communicate and share those with the rest of the group, which was really nice because it brought in a lot of new ideas, a lot of diversity and thinking uh, with code jumping and code writing and algorithms in particular. But again, Working together in teams, critical thinking and communication, not only does Code Jumper offer an excellent understanding and basic concepts and theories to code, uh, but it's, it's taking in all those other skills that we have to do either in school or work, uh, no matter what we are, who we are, where we're at. So we, we, we borrowed, now stole again, sorry, and uh, you know modified that to our need. And I would say that's the other wonderful thing about code jumping in your guys' lessons is it doesn't have to be from step one all the way to you know step Z in finishing. Um, you, you can take what you have based off the level of those students and understanding really their passion and modify that to, you, to your needs on wherever your students are at and what skill levels they are at as well. Answer some of your questions there, Jim? Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right. All right, Betsy, Ann, can we move on to the next slide? We're going to talk about debugging. This is lesson number five. So oh, we, actually, we're going to go to a poll. We are. We're going to go to a poll question. So, Paul, read us in. All right. So let's get into this next one here. Uh, the question about code cards. Um, code cards are, and you're going to pick one choice here. So are they meant to drop clues the students are to follow when coding? Choice two, not meant to be duplicated by teachers, parents, or students. Choice three, located at the end of lessons, used in offline and guided activities and facilitate computational thinking and discussion among students. Or choice four, only meant to be used for individual instruction with a student. Pick the correct one about the code cards. And this is a little bit of a pre pre reading question here because we, we haven't we haven't talked about this uh, specifically. If you've been using the Code Jumper kit, you will have noticed that these cards exist at the end of the lessons, but they are referenced uh, throughout the um, throughout the all of the lessons that are are in Code Jumper. And uh, the ones that are uh, today uh, or for lesson five are are math equations that uh, are incorrect uh, or some are correct and some are incorrect so again those those code cards are something that you're going to find at the end of and the lesson I know that uh, the answers are coming in here and um, and so for for the uh, the sake of time and going ahead and answering that question uh, I began to do that here by indicating that they are located at the end of the lessons used in offline and guided activities and facilitate computational thinking and discussion among students. Um, so again, we wanted to, we've done a number of these and we haven't talked a lot about these, these code cards. So wanted to kind of bring that up and it looks like we've got about 75% uh, of you have responded, responded correctly. And um, if I provided you with the answer, well, I'm glad to do that. So um, Betsy, Ann, why don't we move on to the next slide? Will do. So I'm going to end that poll and move us forward. All right. So, so lesson five is about debugging, and um, there really are three outcomes that uh, the organizers of the of the lessons were really looking for, and that is is that that there are are some students uh, or most all students, I should say, should be able to identify what a bug is. 
And then along with being able to identify a bug, then there would be a few more that would come along that would be able to actually fix that bug. Um, and then um, those that can identify and fix, there would be some that would go forward and actually explain um, the process of actually uh, fixing the bug. And I see someone saying that the slide hasn't advanced. So is that, uh, it advanced for me. Uh, did it advance for everybody else? We should see lesson five debugging. That's the slide we're on. Great, okay, cool. Okay. All right, so um, this lesson goes on to say that the resources that you would be utilizing are going to be uh, the, the, uh, the app video, the hub video, the play, and uh, pause pod video. So, so it's gonna specifically direct you to the videos that you can watch. It's gonna direct you at the beginning of the lesson to go to the end, to the code cards and the math equation specifically. It's gonna point out that the vocabulary uh, include bug debugging, and software engineer. And then uh, the materials, um, specifically the sound sets that you would be using are going to be twinkle twinkle with an error. And then you'll also use the MIDI instrument and specifically the piano. So it really is gonna take some time to go into and explain uh, where you're going to, you're gonna be at. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, an offline activity. And rather than use math uh, cards with some correct and some incorrect uh, uh, math problems, I thought that we would do uh, holiday movies considering that the Christmas is approaching and the holiday season is amongst us. And uh, the movie stars that go along with uh, these these, uh, these movies. And so I've created five cards, one card for uh, the folks that are joining us today. That's Lexi and Jake, Joe, Paul and Betsy Ann. And so I'll go through these and the task of the group is to identify which cards are correct and which cards are incorrect. And then for the ones that are incorrect, what needs to be, what needs to be changed, all right? And so um, Betsy Ann, um, has got Christmas Vacation, the star being Chevy Chase. Paul has the movie Elf and the star being Will Ferrell. Joe, It's a Wonderful Life, the star being Jimmy Cagney. Uh, Jake, A Christmas Story and the star being Peter Billingsley. And then finally, Lexi, the Santa Claus and the star being Ben Allen. All right, so, so Betsy Ann, I'm going to kick it to you uh, to start off this discussion about um, who is the um, who is, is Chevy Chase the correct star? All right. Well, this is not a holiday classic movie in my family, but I did see it for the first time <laughs> last year. Uh, we were having a smaller Christmas at my house, uh, so we didn't have the family drama that Chevy Chase had in Christmas Vacation. But I know it's correct because uh, I have seen that movie now. Hmm. I'm going to hand it off to Paul. Paul, uh, are you a big Elf fan? I have seen it before um, enough and know enough to know that Will Ferrell is the correct person for that movie. All right. So we're two for two right now. Uh, we got to figure out where this bug is. So I'm going to pass it to Joe. You a fan of the classic It's a Wonderful Life? I am. And, and it's now audio described. Uh, oh, and, fantastic. Oh, yeah. And I believe that Jimmy Cagney is incorrect. Ooh, who is it? Who is the lead in that movie? So I think the answer would be Jim Stu Jimmy Stewart or James. There you Stewart. go. Yes. Yeah, you does got it, it. Does everybody agree? Are there any anybody that disagrees? Jake, he's Jake correct. agrees. I think he's on target. Great. Five Great. So we found Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are Gryffindor. Um, so we found one bug so far, and it's that it should be Stewart instead of Cagney. So moving on to Jake, your movie is A Christmas Story. This is a hard one because the star is not really a well-known actor, but is Peter Billingsley, do you think that's the correct answer? I believe this is uh, correct. This hasn't been a uh, traditional Christmas movie uh, in my family for a really long wow. time. And also, you know, the Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation too. So 
I'm glad you finally caught up on uh, a historical yeah. document. Uh, but uh, my answer is correct. Uh, I'm going with P Peter for 300. All right. Um, everybody else feel like Peter Billingsley's probably correct. Everybody oh. agrees with me. I just heard him. Yeah. All right. So the <laughs> next one is the Santa Claus spelled C-L-A-U-S-E. This is one of my favorite childhood Christmas movies. Um, so Lexi, do you think Ben Allen is the star of this movie? I do not think it is Ben Allen. Oh. Oh. Well, guess what? I know who it is because I was also a big fan of home improvement as a child. So I'm going to help you out. It's Tim, the tool man, Taylor. It's Tim Allen. I love All it. right. Cool. So I think we found two bugs in this program and it's Jimmy, Stu it's Jimmy Stewart instead of Jimmy Cagney and Tim Allen instead of Ben Allen. Okay. Right. So, so uh, really the, the idea here is really to kind of model this and really um, hopefully as you've been following along, you could really take this in any number of different directions with the kids. Um, but the whole idea is to get them dialoguing about this, right? You're, you're doing problem solving. You're doing a little bit of, you're doing a little bit of critical thinking, uh, communicating back and forth. And, um, and so along with having a little bit of fun with this, uh, we, again, we're hoping to, uh, to model this for you and to encourage you to take any of those off offline activities and really make them your own, make them meaningful to the kids to get them um, engaged in, in, this, in this discussion about uh, this idea of debugging. So where, where are the bugs and um, how do we go about fixing the bugs? And, um, and then on from there. And so I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, can we move to the next slide? I think we're gonna move into then the, uh, the guided activity, which is let's go racing. And, and Joe's going to, to walk us through this. Uh, this is a, an activity where we will bring in a custom sound set. So uh, you are able to go in and create your own sounds. They can be MP3 and they can be WAV files. And so you can really customize this uh, to really meet the needs again of that audience. And so for but the Sully, he actually yeah. picked a racing theme because I'm a Hoosier. That's why he did it. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, just a gentle I, rib. I, I I couldn't think of. I guess I couldn't think of anything else. I I guess it could have been basketball. Joe. It could have been. Yeah. It could have been basketball. So you're gonna need a. You're gonna need the Code Jumper app. You'll need a hub. You'll need a play pod, and then the custom sound set, which is race day. And what we want you to do is we want you to listen closely as the race gets ready to start and see where the bugs are at. And then we'll go in and we'll do some debugging. And so when I say listen closely as the race gets started, that Betsy Ann, Lexi, Paul, and Jake, as, as Joe describes kind of what's going on. So I need to share my screen again, correct? Yes. So, so a few things stop. that we like to do here is we like to get a computer journal. Uh, so we've, we've done a few of these sessions and we've talked about com uh, computer journaling with Code Jumper. It's a great way for kids to write down in the moment what they're hearing, what they're observing, uh, and then go back and remember that later as things change. So uh, I'm gonna be using, uh, even though I'm teaching, I'm gonna be using a, a braille display here. Uh, and then you know we, people can kind of use anything they want. So pen and paper, computer, uh, just write down observations that you encounter with this, and we will talk about, you know, the things that you hear at the end as we, as we go through and debug this. All right, so hold on one second, Joe. Let me arrange my screen, and I just want to clarify that on the left-hand side of the screen is the Code Jumper app, and on the right-hand side of the screen is uh, the, the Code Jumper hub and, uh, and three pods and no Labrador retriever. A Labrador Correct. retriever we, not here. <laughs> we currently moment. don't have dogs in view. Yeah, well, just <laughs> That just could wait. change. We'll be on yes, dog watch. Could. Right, exactly. Especially we get close so, to five o'clock. Right, exactly. So, okay. So, so I so, think uh, I think we're ready to go, Joe. So debugging quickly is the process of, of finding and fixing bugs in the computer programs. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect three play pods to the hub. So go ahead and uh, plug in three. So you hear that click, that means we have a positive connection. Yep. We right. have got a positive connection and we have, we have all three. We in have, there, right? 
Yep, we okay. have our we have our bugged out. Um, we've got our bugged out program ready to go to. Awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, so this is going to be the, the erase sound. Uh, so what we want to have is the order of erase would start. So you're going to typically hear uh, things like a race car, a countdown, you know, pistol, things like that. But we want to get them in order. So let's go ahead and just. Uh, you want to play the code? Ahead. Let's play the code. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in order to play the code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press the stop and the play button. Now, again, we set this up ahead of time so that the, the first pod, it's sound as well as the duration is set. Same to go with the second and then the third. So, so those have been set up ahead of time. We did not go with twinkle, twinkle, little star, but again, we went with race day and now I'm pressing play and stop simultaneously. Thread one race day. Play starting pistol 2 times speed. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating 2 times speed. And thread. There we go. All right, so there's our code. So I'm going to turn to the class here. And, and Betsy Ann, I'll start with you. What, where do you think the, is there an error that you, you see or hear in this, uh, in this code? Yeah, so I was I was counting it down and it first said pistol, then the countdown and then the racing engine. And I think the countdown needs to go first. All right. So Jim, can you go ahead and adjust the first sound dial to the uh, countdown? Well, what if I don't believe Betsy? What if I want to what if I want to <laughs> listen to it first? Okay. Betsy, Ann, would it be OK if I did that? Um, I know <laughs> I'm right, but you're allowed to prove that I'm right. Okay, I'm gonna prove okay. that you are. I'm gonna prove that you're right. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Yep. So that pistol, that pistol, um, was which was played at two times speed, came up first. So, of course, Joe Betsy Ann is correct. That's She's right. right. How, how now, often should do everything you have to else? Say that, Jim? Very frequently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very frequently. Betsy, I believe in you, even though Thank you didn't you. watch the Christmas or the you know Chevy Chase the Christmas story. It's okay. I've seen it once. Yeah, it's okay. So I'll throw so, this out to anybody in the in the group. D d does anybody else see any else that's wrong? Yeah, I was thinking that there's one other thing that two of them are played at one and a half times speed, and then the pistols at two times speed. Should that be switched to one and a half? That's a good Does that call. not matter? I think we would want everything to be at the same duration, right? Yeah. All right. I think that's going to make it all sound uh, sound like it lives in a similar environment. It all goes together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, what can we begin to do? Where Where do we begin with the process of solving solving the problem? Uh, let's go ahead and read the code back because I'm I'm visually impaired. I I forgot what's on your screen. Red one race day. <laughs> Play starting pistol two times speed. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating two times speed. And thread. So that's our that's our thread, which you can trace from the pod out, by the way. So as you hear each of those threads being, uh, or each of those uh, uh, programs being read, uh, you can follow along the pods and, and go out. So we got three pods, um, started with the pistol at two times. Uh, sorry, sorry, started the countdown at two times, I believe now. Um, so what you what I would do here, Sully, is move the countdown to 1.5. Was that right? Yeah, that so you want the, the countdown to 1.5 here. Let's do this again. All right. Yeah, so sorry. we're gonna we're gonna play this again. Thread one race day. Play starting pistol two times speed. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating two times speed. And thread. Yes. Yeah, so let's so, the, yeah, yeah we need on. to yeah we need to move um, the first play pod to countdown from starting pistol. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right. And then we need to check and see if it's still at one and a half or two. Yeah, and just make it all two or one. There we go. So we can actually check the code by playing. Thread one race day. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. 
Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating 2 times speed. So now and we need breath. to take take 2 and switch it to 1.5. No, it's at 1.5, like but it, it it's it's got to go to the pistol now because yeah, it's, it got moved. we got the countdown okay. twice. There it is. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Countdown starting pistol and then car accelerating. I think we should have it right now. All right, well let's let's check. Let's read it out. Thread 1 race day. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play starting pistol 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating 2 times speed. And still thread. Got, looks like we still got the car at 2. Yep, so we can, can change that. Change that down to yep. All right. All right. So one more time. Shall we read the code? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Start your engines. Oop. Thread one race day. Play countdown 1.5 times speed. Play starting pistol 1.5 times speed. Play car accelerating 1.5 times speed. And thread. All right. So and I think we're ready to play it and see if it uh, is true here. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. So, go. yeah. So, so again, the idea here is again in modeling this, and there, there really is a, a lot going on. And uh, a couple of things to point out. Um, number one, uh, the students that are using this, because this is a physical programming language, as we talked about it, everything is right there for them to be able to, to get their hands on, right? The entire uh, program is there. The hub, which is the heart of it, PlayPod 1, PlayPod 2, and PlayPod 3. And every time they do something, they get an immediate um, reaction uh, or an immediate uh, sound. So if I turn the sound dial... I hear something happening. Five, four, three. I'm capable of stopping it. And I'm capable, as you saw us, of continuing to play that code over and over again until, until we got it right. And that was the whole intention of this, this program. We've been talking a lot with Cecily Morrison at Microsoft lately. We've been talking with some folks uh, uh, in San Antonio at Northside ISD about how they're using the program in an inclusive um, uh, clothing um, classroom. We've been talking with folks in Pennsylvania who are rolling this out across the state in some of their intermediate units. But um, there's this collaboration that's going on. Uh, there's this, everybody gets an opportunity to, to really interact with this. And there are these immediate responses as the, as the kids are working on this to create this inclusive experience. And again, we talked about it being ages seven to 11. Obviously, Jake's folks, um, you know, uh, serving elementary, middle school, and high school, the, there was a real range of kids that were, were using this. But the idea is to in introduce these concepts. Debugging was the main concept. You saw the critical thinking going on, the problem solving that was going on. Um, and then, as Joe's going to talk about now more, this idea of journaling. So, Joe, I'm going to kick it back to you. All right. So, uh, let's uh, look at our journal. So as we were doing that, hopefully uh, my pupils were taking notes um, and looking at the bugs. So what I'm going to go to Paul here, uh, and, and I just want you to guess, we didn't necessarily give the definition out, but what do we call it when the Code Jumper program has a problem? So... You're, you're not talking about a bug in the program, are you? I, I am actually, you got to write bug is exactly what I was looking for. So what, what did you observe uh, when we started this out? Did, did everything work right away or did we have a few bugs when we first started this? There was definitely some bugs in that program. Awesome. So what, what term did we use to fix, go and listen and fix the problem? So we, trace the code we also listen to the you know listen to the output we did yeah 
um, I'm, there's I'm probably super, another term you're looking for, right? Basically, I'm looking for debugging. So we were we were going through looking for for bugs and then fixing the computer program, um, and we basically did that with the race because when we first had it, the race was all out of order. Uh, we had, I believe the I wrote down the the pistol was going off first and the countdown, our, our race would have been completely uh, not legit. So. <laughs> um, so software engineers are the ones who write computer programs. So the, so we actually, in the journal here and in the lessons, we actually have sometimes vocabulary that we're teaching the kids. So going through um, this, you know, we're actually sort of being computer engineers as we make the code and fix the code. Uh, that's things that computer, computer engineers are going to be doing, or software engineers are gonna be doing as they develop actual code and, and programs. Um, so one more question I have for all of you to journal, uh, what ways do you think that the code jumper app could be broken or sorry, code jumper program could be broken. What ways could the, the, the race day program, what ways can it be broken? Yes. Just, or just any program. So as we yeah. were to do any program within code jumper, what ways do you think we could actually have issues or we it could be broken. Yeah, I can think of an immediate example. We were um, we were just in a meeting where one of our colleagues was using a loop pod, which is a pod that's used to play a, pro a selection of the program uh, a certain number of times. And there are uh, there are two wires coming out of the loop. One's longer, one's shorter, and it has mm -hmm. two plugs. And figuring out what order you need to do the long part of the, the cord, the short part of the cord, and which plugs to put it in. Uh, we got burps a lot of the time, and that's how Code Jumper lets you know that you've got it wrong, is it belches at you. And it took us some trial and error to get the program to do what we wanted it to do. Yes, you, you got it. That's that's a big one. The other, the other major one that I can think of is the sound duration could be wrong. So when you first plug it in, we actually what we saw was we had, I think one at two X speed, and then we had two at 1.5, or maybe we had two at two, I'm sorry. We had two at two X and then one at 1.5. So the, when you're running the program, it doesn't sound, you know, in sync. So that could be something that could be wrong that, that breaks your program. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily, it's not gonna burp at you like the example you used, Betsy but it's going to not sound correct. Um, and then you could also have a situation where we have four threads that you can plug into on the hub. So let's say Sully on his computer had race day on thread one. I didn't even ask him which one he was using, but let's just pretend he had it on thread one. If someone were to plug it into thread four, they're going to get a whole different sound set, right? So like if thread four is set to cowboy country, uh, you're not going to get your race day when you're turning the dials. So it's something to look at and go uh, look at and say, okay, what am I doing wrong here? I got to debug this and okay, I got it in thread four and it should be in thread one. So those are ways that code jumper itself, you, you could actually have to sort of, you could actually break the program by uh, just doing that. I could add into actual physical uh, damage, like if your dog was to, uh, you know, bite it and take off with it, or another good possibility is, uh, you know, charging batteries, making sure, you know, they're all good to go there as well. And the biggest thing we always remind our students in camper is after each lesson, let's put it back in the box so we can use it for tomorrow. That's what, and make sure to shut off the hub, right? Correct. Yeah. So, still all real things with coming to code. If you don't have a computer or a keyboard, you know, from a real code writer, how can they actually go in to write those algorithms or code? So exactly. Uh, so one thing I was going to ask you, Jake, is uh, did you guys do journaling at Alpha Point? So we didn't do journaling per se, as you have recommended, but after setting and through this lesson plan, I think this is something that we should focus more on next year. We did do verbal journaling, I guess you could put it that way. We talked out loud afterwards. We uh, did that as a large group. We did that as smaller groups. But one thing in my experience is having 
written data to go back on to later because we can't remember everything, right? And then looking back at that maybe for the future and helping that really, um, you know, guide us maybe future lesson plans. One thing I would like to see the youth take more of a role on this year after we do a couple lesson plans, encouraging them to come up with their own. You know, what better way to demonstrate uh, your ability and knowledge and understanding of Code Jumper than to write or come up with a lesson plan as a group yourself? And they can do that with taking on um, better journaling or uh, better writing, I, I believe. So thanks for that question, Joe. No problem. So um, this has been a little look at the debugging lesson. And as Sully said, you guys can all go to this, look at it. And you can either use the examples. We, we kind of stepped outside the lines and did our custom sounds, but you can follow along and do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or you can customize it yourself and make it your own. So uh, Paul, we'll go ahead and go on back to you. All right, so it's time for our final poll question. And this is a true or false question. Uh, going back to the Alpha Point camp again. So true or false, students attending Alpha Point's technology summer camp bring home assistive technology. True or false, students attending Alpha Point's technology summer camp bring home assistive technology. And one more opportunity for you to put some questions in the chat, whether they be code jumper, you want to ask about that program, how that was done, or if you have a question for the folks from Alpha Point. Yeah, and um, as these guys are responding to these questions, again, we do want to encourage people to uh, throw, um, throw, throw questions in the chat. But Betsy, can you go back two slides just real quick? Yes, um, so we just, missed a few. Yeah, so, so as far as closure goes, um, Joe really kind of did a, a great job of really, again, asking students to explain what a bug is and to give an example and asking students how to debug uh, something. I um, mean, again, give, giving uh, examples of how they did that, their program. That's specifically written into the lessons. And then if you want to move to the next slide. The, um, the standards here, um, I, I'm not going to read them off um, the numbers of them, but these are um, the standards that really were addressed in uh, lesson number five, debugging. And again, these are CSTA K-12 computer science standards. And, and they, are, they, are, they are set first grade, although they are going to be very applicable. Um, and that is, again, the ability to be able to identify and fix errors in an algorithm determine potential solutions and solving simple hardware and software problems, and then testing and debugging a program or, or an algorithm to ensure it runs. The, those are the standards. Those are, again, first grade standards, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and you saw us do all, all that today. So it really gives you an opportunity to come back and talk about this um, in various um, areas, whether it's an IEP meeting, uh, whether you're talking about this specifically with other staff members who are teaching computer science uh, at the, in the schools where you're at, uh, after school programs, camps, et cetera. So thanks, Betsy Ann, for letting me cover those. And I guess we'll take a look at our last poll question then. All right, for the question, students attending Alpha Point's technology summer camp bring home assistive technology, 100% of poll respondents said that's true. Awesome. Jake, is that true? Yes, ma'am, Betsy, that is true. They take home uh, the laptop along with a pair of headphones, uh, you know, assistive technology, whether that be um, Zoom text or JAWS, laptop, friends for a lifetime, and knowledge. So, yes, Great. true. Thank you. All right. Well, I think it's about time we head and wrap up to some discoveries. Let me get let me get over back to those. All right, so um, we've got here in this link for the discoveries. We've got information about Alpha Point Summer Camp. Uh, I think that's been put in, in the slides already, or in the chat already. We can put that back in there for you, uh, and then. There is the youth services link in here as well for you so that you can go through and uh, get more information about Alpha Point, whether you're in Kansas City or not, uh, you still may be able to benefit from everything that they have and they have going on. And we have one additional slide to show you about CodeJumper. Uh, one thing we haven't talked about 
um, is, is purchasing it. It's available on quota and it's available for non-quota. Uh, the quota price is $795. Uh, the non-quota price is at $999. So it is available to everyone to purchase. If you are someone that thinks, you know, I would just like to use this with, with uh, my own family or a child of my own, you certainly can do that, but it's also available on quota as well. So uh, there we go. Great. Well, I'm looking in the chat. I'm not seeing any questions. Thanks, Jake, for dropping in this link to the video. What what would we? So what, that's our, what is this video about? That's Adventure Camp video, and I just I know we're today talking more about technology, but Adventure Camp video to give you guys an idea about what Lexi was, um, you know, referring to earlier, and we have different. Oh, tracks kind of, so to speak, for adventure camp based off of age. So we do a day camp, but then we also do a residency camp. So campers from all over come stay, uh, you know, mom or dad or whomever guardian uh, just drops them off at the beginning of the week and then comes at the end of the week for the ceremony. Um, and like Lexi was saying earlier, rock climbing, uh, zip lining, tomahawk throwing, uh, horseback riding, arts, activities, I mean, swimming just about every day. We do a huge mud fight, mug, or mud tug or war, yeah. which Lexi's team lost this past summer. So I just wanted to publicly state that uh, for the record. Um, but it's a right. lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. And um, we're really excited about it. And uh, Adventure Camp registration actually is open already and can be found on our youth uh, website event landing page, which you shared earlier with the group, Betsy. So, so thanks for bringing that up. Awesome. Yeah. And just to, you know, real quick, just so you know, um, in our discoveries, which I've went past, I do apologize. Uh, these lessons, you know, they may have been made for younger students, but they're certainly ones that you can use with high school students. There's no reason why, you know, adults can't even, you know, I've seen adults with co jumpers just really enjoy the whole process and, and find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, as, as they've talked about, the summer camps are open to anyone all across the U.S. And, you know, those, uh, Code jumper lessons, you know, you can use them whether you have, you know, a good bit of knowledge, not very much knowledge. Uh, you can learn it yourself to teach people uh, inside a classroom in a more formal setting or in a less formal setting. So there's a lot of things that you can do and a lot of options that are available to you. 